This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday the 13th. I'm James Spann. little sleet in parts of Alabama making people wonder what's going to happen tonight, but this is no big deal. Mostly rain tonight, no travel issues. Let's remind everybody that Thursday night we will be at Pleasant Grove High School as the Storm Alert Tour rolls along, the annual Severe Weather Awareness Tour across the state. Very special this year as we look back on the generational tornado outbreak of April 27th last year that killed 252 people in the state. Some very powerful stories. Get there early to get a good seat. We'll see you Thursday. That is our Birmingham Metro show this year. Check some of the SkyCam shots. That's the uh, Tuscaloosa SkyCam. We've had reports of sleet falling there, but temperatures are almost at 50. So, hey, no problem there. Uh, really upper 40s uh, mostly as the sleet comes down. It's all about evaporative cooling. You know the deal. There's the uh, Huntsville SkyCam, pretty much the same setup there. The low levels are very dry. And from Mount Sheeha in East Alabama, mid-level clouds on a cool but uh, warmer day, nothing like the cold we experienced over the weekend. Check out temperatures, and you can see most folks are sitting around 50 around here. These are at 2 o'clock, Birmingham at 49, the Shelby County Airport 50. And we're going to be close to 70 later in the week. Goodness, the uh, uh, GFS is coming in at 71 now on Wednesday. Wow. And around the nation, pretty cold. They owe, uh, you know, back to the north of here where snow is on the ground. It's been snowing in Missouri and parts of Arkansas today. Winter weather advisories in effect there. A few counties in northeast Arkansas under a winter storm warning, but uh, I'm not so sure they'll meet that criteria there. And, and we do note the Weather Service in Huntsville put up a winter weather advisory for the counties and their county warning area, and that's the Tennessee Valley. And again, even there, I just don't think they'll be close to freezing. So uh, just a little bit of sleet, and that's about it. No big deal. Red flag warning down to the south. That means a very low dew point, dry air, and gusty winds making for a high wildfire danger. And a winter storm warning out west for parts of Nevada and Utah. If you want to see some snow on the ground, that's your spots there. This is the uh, chance of over one inch of snow between now and, uh, uh, let's see, 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. Better numbers, places like Indianapolis, Columbus, Ohio, Pittsburgh, Salt Lake City, the mountains of uh, Colorado, down into the mountains of Arizona around Flagstaff, and the rain for the next five days. Uh, this is suggesting... 2.2 inches just north of uh, Columbus, Georgia, around LaGrange. Amounts here would be probably one and a half to two inches. And that would be the rain we get tonight and tomorrow and the rain that we are expecting uh, for Wednesday night and Thursday. And speaking of that event, uh, this is the Day 3 Convective Outlook. This is for really late Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. And uh, this is suggesting that uh, just 5% severe weather probabilities for much of Alabama, Mississippi, and points south and west. And we'll uh, explore that here in, uh, in just a little bit. By the way, that's that uh, winter weather advisory for the Weather Service in Huntsville. And there's a peak at the radar. That's at 207. And again, that stuff over uh, Alabama, you see those echoes over uh, Tuscaloosa, Green, Walker, Winston counties producing a lot of reports of sleet. But temperatures are in the upper 40s there, so no big deal. All right, let's look at modeling. This is the 12Z GFS, valid at noon tomorrow. And really, the system producing the light rain tonight is dampening out. we got a trough back in the southwest. And down below that, the uh, the light rain should be ending tomorrow morning. Uh, and again, everybody under one half inch, and it's certainly not a big rain event. Uh, highs go in the upper 50s tomorrow. Wednesday, again, the GFS really brings up the thickness values. It's suggesting a high of 71. Wow. The dam is somewhat cooler at 64, we'll say upper 60s. And note the setup there, got a surface low at Oklahoma City on Wednesday with a chance of uh, thunderstorms down around the Arklatex. We'll keep an eye on that. Wednesday night at midnight, the surface low is over central Illinois with a trailing front approaching from the west and have a good chance of showers and storms. And then by midday Thursday, the GFS is everything out of here. It's moving along pretty fast, so it's really suggesting the main uh, window for rain and storms, I'd say about 9 o'clock Wednesday night until 9 o'clock Thursday morning. We'll check the uh, instability. This is at midnight Wednesday night, and there just isn't any, but the NAM is slower. But look at the uh, shear values. Those That's the uh, 0 to 3 kilometer helicity, and those numbers are very high. So the shear is pretty robust. The instability is the big question mark, and it just remains to be seen. We'll be watching that, and once we get this thing out of here tonight, we'll focus on that. But no doubt, a chance we could see some strong storms either Wednesday night or maybe into Thursday morning. We'll be watching. All right, Friday, we are dry. 
and very comfortable. This would suggest low 60s. We note that system in the Gulf. Now, let's look at Saturday as we start the weekend. We've got energy that's not really phased up. And down below that, the GFS showing maybe a little bit of spotty rain here and there, but not much. It's got a surface low way south, and the bulk of the rain is south of here. In Sunday, we're cooler and drier. Highs drop back in the lower 50s, maybe upper 40s on Sunday, if this is right, with a chilly north wind. We'll check the European on Saturday. Very similar. It's a little farther north. European suggesting rain possible from about Birmingham south on Saturday, but the heavier rains near the Gulf Coast. So I think we ought to mention a chance of light rain on Saturday, especially from Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, Anniston South. Up in the Tennessee Valley, you'll probably be dry. And we'll adjust that as we get closer. And then Monday of next week, that looks like a dry and cool day with the very uneventful conditions. We'll check the end of the forecast on the 29th. Yeah, this is leap year, an extra day this month. Interesting setup there. Very strong uh, southwest flow aloft, and that tends to lead to this overrunning. And now we got a 1,036 millar bar high. It's uh, north of New York. And, of course, this is voodoo out here, but I'm just saying it by chance that's right. That might mean icing somewhere on the northern periphery of all that, but we all know that will change again. NAO watching the North Atlantic Oscillation. Uh, well, a few more members are trying to bring it negative toward the end of this month. We'll see. Again, we just a lot of us have the gut feeling March might be a fun month. Maybe some mischief. We'll see. Nobody knows for sure. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And if you live around here, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.